In this video, we're going to go through the settings for your Facebook group and make sure you have familiarized yourself with the majority of features so you can take full advantage of this free platform to help with your business digital marketing. If you are creating a private group for yourself or an interest, this video will still work for you as we go through all the features. This will cover the desktop version. And if you want me to show you on iPhone, just leave a comment below. My name is Tracy and my goal is to make your life a little easier with some of the digital marketing tech while you grow your business online. And if this is the type of video you want, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so I know to make more like this. First of all, Facebook groups are a free marketing tool option that allows you to attract new customers and engage with your current ones. So why wouldn't you use it to your full advantage? Facebook has even told you what it wants, which is meaningful engagement and more community. And as a business owner, that can be very beneficial to you. Groups also help your business build on the trust factor. When you start your group, try to have some intention on what you're using the group for and who you want in the group. With that said, let's get started. I've gone through setting up a Facebook group in a previous video with the basic settings that you should check out if you haven't set up your group yet. I'm going to take that you already have the group set up and we're going to get to it by clicking groups on the left side of our page. From there, you can see several options with one of them being groups you manage, which is where we want to go. Click on the group you previously created and a quick note, remember that what you see on my screen may not be the exact same on your screen, depending on what version of Facebook you have. Facebook is continuously adding features and A-B testing current features and options and moving settings around. So don't be alarmed if it's not exactly the same. To our left, we see all the admin tools to manage our group. And we're first gonna to go to the very bottom on the left-hand side and go to settings. And then we're gonna go through each of the options available. We're gonna start at the top and we're gonna click on the pencil to edit any of the options. First, we'll start with the name and description. And um, I'm fine with the name and I'm also fine with the description. If I wanted to change the name, I can, but I will have to wait 28 days in between each name chain. And also once your group reaches 5,000 members, you won't be able to change the name again. Description is a great place to add more information about the group or relevant link. Or if the group is for a paid membership you have, then you might just want to say that. That way, if new people find your group, they will realize they can't join unless they are part of your membership. So we're happy with our name and description and we're going to click on save. The next few options would have been selected at the time of creating your group, but we'll go over them. Privacy, there are two settings, public where anyone can see who's in the group and what they post or private where only members can see who's in the group and what they post. And I created private when I originally set this up, so I will not be able to change it back to public. You can, however, change a public group to private but that change does take three days and it's uh, the three days is if in case you want to change your mind within that time. For any of the business I personally manage, I create a private group. Next is whether the group will be visible or hidden. If visible, anyone can find this group and it will show up in the search bar where people could come and search your group and they'll see it. Or I can also make it hidden and only members can find the group. I'm going to keep it visible. So I'm just going to hit cancel here. Our next option is location and fill it out if you want to add your physical location to the group. I'm not going to, so if I hit edit, I would just hit cancel because I'm not going to put in a group location. The next one is customizing your group and is the web address. And this one is important. Click on the pencil. I believe at this time you can only change this information on desktop. I haven't found it in mobile, but that could change. And this way you can change the address to your group name and then it will be easier to find rather than a bunch of numbers. This is another option that will not be able to be changed once you have more than 5,000 members. So I'm going to change it. And as you can see, I've got the little green tick, which means that it is fine. And I'm going to hit save. So now you can find this group by going to newbie digital marketing. Now we're going to go to group colors. We're going to click in the drop down menu and we can change any of our colors. And this, what this does is it highlights um, on certain sections and your buttons. It's not that noticeable on desktop, but on mobile, it actually shows up with a, the banner at the very top shows up with the color. So if I chose purple and click save and then went to my group, you'll see that it has purple on the button and this is highlighted 
purple as well. And if this was on mobile, you would have a purple banner. Then we're gonna go to badges and badges are just little prompts that help with engagement in your group. Members can earn these badges and they're displayed by their name. And all we have to do is click the pencil and toggle the ones we want on and off. So for instance, mine would have a min beside it, which is actually really good because then if people need to ask questions, they know who the admins are or the moderators. And new member is nice because it lets people know that this is a new member, rising star. These are all good for engagement, but if you want them off, you just toggle um, back and forth, click save. And then the last one is the group affiliation. Again, click on the pencil. And if I wanted to uh, show that as an admin, I'm managing the group, I would click on group affiliation and then I would click this and save. And now it shows that I am affiliated with this group. It's also a nice shout out to uh, the admin for managing the group. If you want to see what that looked like, my name now is underneath here. It also helps that again, um, someone in the, as a member can find out who is administrating the group and contact them directly. Next, we're gonna go into the extra features and the first one is group type. Again, click on the pencil and the default is general, but you do have some options uh, depending on what type of group you have. The one I like is social learning because then you can organize posts into units or series that your members can actually go through and, and track their progress. Also as an admin, you can monitor their progress and see if they need any assistance in any of the units. It's a good option and I will do a quick video showing you the options of that type of group. Um, so look for that. Make sure you're checking out the other group types just to see if they're more relatable to what you're doing. But if you're not sure, just stay with the general group. Next one in the list is mentorship, which is off by default. But again, depending on the purpose of your group, it's another good option for engagement and support within the group. So we would click add and then you can choose the type of support that the members of your group would be most interested in. General support, career advancement, you can just go through these options. So if I click on general support and save, it will create a post for you and you can add to this post. They also give you a link to their post, explaining a bit more. You kind of sign up, match yourself with a partner and get, as they say, helpful conversation strategies each week so you get to know each other better. So I'm gonna click on post and now you see I have a new tab, it's called mentorship. And if you want a really detailed look, how to set up the mentorship within your group where you have group members uh, creating membership profiles and uh, showing their expertise and experience and also how members can connect with them, how that all works. Check out my other video and I'll go through the sign up, the find the partner, get connected and the guided men mentorship. I'm gonna go back to settings. The next section will be guides and we just go over here and click add. And once we do that, we now have guides added to our group. Now it shows that your group has a guide section and you start a guide and you click on the start a guide. And why do you want guides? They're like modules and you can organize and share your content. You can put it in the order you want. You can make sure your important posts or training guides are all within the guide area. And the other great thing is that members can actually um, track their completion. And bonus, as an admin, you can actually view that in the group's insights. You just have to make sure that you toggle it on and I'll show you that in a minute. And now you're in the guides area and you will put the guide name, which is the title and then a description. We've created the actual guide and now we create posts within the guide and we can create quizzes as well. And there's lots that we can do with a guide. It can be really good for your group. So I do have another video if you wanna watch that. But if you want to create a post, it's just a click and you give a question or you give your post a title and I can post it. And now you have the start of your guide. And as we looked before, we go home and we're at our guides. And now we have the start of our guide section. And then, like I said, I just wanna show you that you wanna make sure that when you have your guides, you do have uh, the show progress toggled on. And that's only if you wanna show the progress within the guides. The next one is host a question and answer. 
and you can decide who can host a question and answer post. It could be only the mins and moderators or anyone in this group. And at the beginning, I would definitely have anyone in the group because it gets, again, the engagement going. And what that looks like is I can create a post, go over here and host question and answer and put in my question. So put in my question, click next. Now I can post it. I can also schedule this post to start at a particular time, but I'll just post it. And then you can see that I'm answering questions and now you can comment with your answers. You also can go up to the top three here, little uh, dots, and you can end this question and answer, or you can mark it as an announcement, which I'll go over in a little bit. Also, you could add this post to a guide, which would be very good because people might have certain questions that uh, you can answer and that be something as a FAQ or reference. The other thing we can do is we can add a post topic. So we click on post topic. And if I decided to say Facebook pages, and save. Now, when anyone goes through my group and searches with Facebook pages, this particular post will show up and any post with the topic Facebook pages. And now, just because I refreshed it, you can also see that there that's going to be a popular topic in posts because one, it's the only one I have, but this is where also those will show up. So if I clicked on the topic, it would easily take me to that particular post. Going back to settings, we now are going to go down to the actual member who can join the group click on the pencil and you have the option of having only profiles or accounts you're someone with a Facebook account or you can do profile and pages for instance I have a Facebook account and I also run a Facebook page and I can now join this group with either the profile or the page. I do allow pages to join my groups, but I also wanna make sure that they're going to be engaged in the group and not promote their own pages or groups. You can spell that all out in the group rules, which I'll get to. So I click on profiles, and since I already chose profiles, I'll just leave it as is. The next one is who can improve member requests. Again, click on the pencil and you can have it that anyone in the group can approve members or only admin and moderators. I like to monitor my group, so I only allow admin and moderators to approve member requests. Moving down, who is pre-approved to join? If you run other groups, you can actually pre-approve people or members from those groups. Click on the pencil and I can choose groups or I actually can create a file and upload it where I have all the email addresses, maybe from my email list. And if they're connected to a Facebook account, I can um, pre-approve those people and they will automatically be approved if they request to join the group. Continuing on, we're now gonna see who can manage the discussion. And there's three areas who can post, who can approve the members post and who can approve edit. So we'll quickly go through them. Anyone in the group can post or only admins. I like anyone in the group post because again, I want engagement, but you may choose depending on what your group's about to only have the admins. Approve all member posts. This again is that I could switch this to on and then any admin or moderator would have to approve a member's post or I can leave it off, which I have it where members can post directly to the group, which is the way I like to have it again for engagement and then approve edits is the same as approving members posts if they make an edit to their original post do you want to have to approve that or not I have it as off moving to the advanced settings we can link our pages if we'd like as I mentioned earlier I have a page and so I can actually link my page to this group and it looks like this click on edit I go to my page Tracy Gurney the page, not my personal account, and I click on link, and I now am linking my page to this group. And why you may wanna do that, if people do go to your page, here's my page, again, it's all the same picture, so it might be a little confusing to you. Here's my page, if I go under more and community, you'll see this page is part of the group. And if you like this page, you may decide to join my group. Now back to settings, the next one would be the recommended groups. If you have some groups that complement your group and you wanna be a good neighbor, you can recommend them. You click on the pencil and then just select one of the groups that come up, click on the recommended. 
And if I want to see what that looked like, I would just go home and I would go about. And then you can see I've recommended this group. And the last piece of settings is apps. And if you have any uh, third party apps that are not by Facebook, they're definitely third party apps that add tools or features, you would add them in here. None of these apps I want to add to the Facebook group. So that's it for settings. And now we're just going to take a little quick tour through the admin tool and a member requests. You can review here and see anyone that's asked to join your group. And you have some filters that you can go by for searching through them. The automatic member approval, you can set up criteria to automatically approve members. You would click on setup and you would say, oh, they're in a particular locations or they're already friends with someone. These again are all up to you whether you want to allow that type of just automatic member approval. I'm not, so I'm just gonna hit cancel. Membership question. This is where you can ask up to three questions of people wanting to join your group. I definitely think you should create at least two that are relevant to the group. And the third question asks if they would like to subscribe to your email list and have them enter their email address. That will help grow your email, but you would just go in here and add a question, which would look like this. It can either be a checkbox, multiple choice or written answer and I'm just going to do written answer and then I'm going to add another question click on create and again written answer and one more save and so they have to fill out those questions and if you want to delete any of these you just click on delete or if you want to edit and we're going to change this and we're going to just say that they can say no thanks if they don't want to leave their email and that way our membership now has to answer three questions we also have group rules but we'll go down and show you that in a minute we're going to go to pending posts now if you had it set up in settings that you had to approve the posts they would show up here but of course i don't have any of those and then post topics this is a great way to organize your posts and allow members to search easily for specific topics rather than having to scroll through tons of old posts so we should have one already here which is facebook page and we can just create more here click on create i'll just put in save and now anytime i have a post and i click on the topic and I add that topic, uh, it will show up when people search. And so now um, this will show up also on the Facebook group. We now have Instagram. And if I actually created a post about Instagram, and then we can go to the three dots up here and we can actually add post topic and we can say it is an Instagram post and we're gonna click save. And now we have a post in the Instagram and also that you'll be able to see that. So you just go up to the three dots to do that. Back to schedule posts, and it's pretty well exactly what it says. You can create a post and then schedule it. This is a great way to create engagement and can easily be done when you go through and create a content calendar where all your content is laid out for the next few months. But you would again, just create a, a post and hit schedule and that actually will show up on that particular date. And if we go back to scheduled post, you'll also see that now we can see what posts we do have scheduled and we can either post now or we can reschedule them. Again, you can go up to the three dots and you can add your post topic. Uh, you can delete the post, you can turn on and off commenting, all that good stuff. The next thing is your activity log and it just shows activity within the group. You can search by date or members and you can add notes and you would do this if you had multiple people administering this group so that you could say, oh, I've changed the name of the group. I've, I've done something to the group that other admin or moderators should know about. Maybe I've changed the group rules. And speaking of group rules, we can go here to group rules. I definitely would set these up. You can write up to 10 different rules and Facebook does give you some default options options where you just add them by clicking on the rule and then clicking on create. So we'll do that. No hate or bullying, Be kind and courteous, no promotion to spam, respect everyone's privacy. And then if you wanted to create your own, you would just do a title and description and click create. So now when someone's coming to your group, you can ask them to make sure they read the group rules. And we can go back to our membership questions and we can go down to group rules and we can ask people to agree to the rules. If they don't agree to the rules, then they don't get to join. And then we can go to member reported content. 
and this is where you can see if members have reported specific content within the group that they feel doesn't follow the rules or they have some issue with it, you'll go here to just double check and make sure, again, just to manage your group. Now we're gonna to go to moderation alerts. These are great for managing the content and vibe of the groups. You can add keyword alerts where you create an alert with a specific keyword. And every time that's used within the group, you can see how it's being used. You could use it for both negative and positive keywords. For example, if you track negative keywords that create problems within the group, you could also track keywords that help you understand what content the group is responding to. For instance, if I wanted to be alerted whenever anyone said hate or foul language, I could add it in here. I also could add something positive like maybe um, help in the sense that they needed help and I'm monitoring that keyword so I would know that, oh, this person needs help with some information that we are posting or we're talking about in our group. And then you also can do engagement alerts. You click on create and you can decide what type of content you want, whether it's posts or comments. So you just click any comments and you can see what type of engagement. Um, you can see likes, uh, how many loves, uh, all the reactions. And that way you can, again, monitor the vibe of your group and see what's going on, what type of posts or comments are getting more group engagement. And then what you do with that information is then you go, oh, well, these posts actually are getting quite a bit of engagement. Maybe I will produce more posts like this. And you just click save. And if you want to edit the alert, you just go here and you can edit or delete the alert. And now the last one is group quality. This has nothing to do with you managing it. This is uh, Facebook telling you if they feel there's any issues with your Facebook group. So it's good to check there just to double check. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to let you know um, how an announcement is created. So we just create a post, click on post. And now I actually can go in the three little dots again and I can mark this as an announcement. And now um, this will stay at the top of the page. If I refresh, you'll notice that I now have announcements tab. And when you go there, you'll get all the announcements and I can have multiple an announcements. The other thing is you don't have to create a post. I could make this post and mark it as an announcement. And now it too will be considered an announcement. Go to the top, click on refresh. We have both of them there. And that's it. I did not get to the insights, which is a really good section in your group where it really shows you what your group is doing. I will have another video on that as well. And I also did not show you all the options you have when you create a post, which I will go over in another video. And that's it. So I do have a setting up a Facebook business page guide if you'd like to grab that since we've covered the groups. And thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button to get notified when I upload a new video.